and welcome to the Chemistry Academy. In this video, we're going to go over equilibrium and equilibrium constants in relation to the advanced higher chemistry curriculum. So some of this stuff, a lot of it, you'll have learned at higher, so we're not going to go into too much detail. If you do want a refresh of the higher equilibrium content, then go and check out my higher equilibrium video that you'll find on my higher chemistry playlist. But we will have a quick run through of it in this but we're not going to go into any depth so if some of what I'm saying about the higher stuff doesn't make sense go back and watch that tutorial so things you need to remember is that at dynamic equilibrium and it's called the dynamic equilibrium because the reaction is still moving there's still stuff going on stuff isn't like static and not changing so we need to remember that the rates of the forwards and the backwards reactions are equal so the rates are equal and the concentrations of the reactants and products are constant. So the main thing I want you to remember is that the rates are equal, the concentrations are constant. Then at higher, we learned about the effects of different things on the position of equilibrium. So we had the effect of concentration, the effect of pressure, the effect of temperature, and the effect of catalyst. So just main things I wanted to highlight um, to jog your memory here was that when it comes to concentration, Remember, the equilibrium is always shifting to try and undo the change you've made. Um, so if you increase the concentration of something, it's going to shift to remove it. And if you decrease the concentration, it's going to shift to recreate it. The thing you need to remember when it comes to the concentration, though, is that hydrogen ions will remove hydroxide ions and vice versa. So sometimes we'll have a reaction that has hydrogen ions in it. We add sodium hydroxide and you're asked how the equilibrium will change, and we think, well, there's no sodium hydroxide, there's no sodium ions, hydroxide ions in the reactions, so nothing will happen, but the hydroxide ions will remove the hydrogen ions, so the equilibrium is going to shift to reproduce those hydrogen ions that have been removed. This concept here is very important in advanced higher when it comes to the pH of salts and buffers, so it's important that you understand the effect of concentration on equilibrium because that underpins that whole pH of salt solutions and um, mechanism of buffers kind of things as well. Then we've got pressure, uh, that only affects the gases but just a key thing to remember is that if you've got a higher pressure that's going to favour less moles of gas being produced and vice versa. For temperature, the thing I like to tell people to remember is intendo, so an increase in temperature favours the endothermic reaction. That'll just help you work out which way the equilibrium is going to shift with an increase in temperature or a decrease in temperature if that is the case. So increasing temperature always favours the endothermic reaction. And then lastly, the catalyst, they don't have an effect on the position of equilibrium because they speed up both the forward and backwards reactions by the same amount. So the equilibrium position stays in the same place. It doesn't shift to favour the production of products or the production of reactants. Okay, just you'll get to equilibrium quicker because the reactions are going faster. So that's the kind of the higher stuff. Then we move on to the advanced higher stuff here, which is usually all around the equilibrium constant, which is a capital K. It's very important when you're writing stuff, uh, the K for equilibrium constant, that you do make it a clearly a capital K. You also get a K in kinetics when it comes to the rate equations. That's a small K, it's a kicking K. That's what we got taught when I was at primary school. So make sure you should clearly show the difference between them. Equilibrium constant's a large K. The kinetics rate equation rate constant K is a small K. Okay, <laughs> so for this general reaction here, we've got A moles of A, B moles of B, giving you C moles of C plus D moles of D. The way the equilibrium constant expression is set up is that K, capital K, is equal to the concentration of the products times by their molar in indices, so the number of moles becomes a power, um, over the reactants, the concentration of the reactants to, oh, sorry, that should be a small a, um, to the power of the number of moles that there were. So I've got some examples here to put that into practice but the power bit is probably the thing that people forget. So things to remember is that it's products over reactants always. So the products where whichever way the reaction is shown, these are always the products, these are always the reactants. 
and just don't forget to put the number of moles as a power for that particular substance. The other thing you need to remember is that it, although I've not got state symbols here, we'll see in the examples in a minute, that we always exclude any pure liquids and solids. So if any of your substances in the reaction have the state symbol L or S, they don't get put into the equilibrium expression for the equilibrium constant. Okay. You'll then also get asked um, about like the value of the equilibrium constant. So the equilibrium constant value doesn't have any units, it's just a, a number. And it's kind of, you can think of it as like a fraction, a decimal fraction. So it's because it's essentially telling you the proportion of products versus reactants. So for that reason, if you have more products than reactants, so that means you have a bigger number on the top than the bottom, your K value should be greater than one because you're dividing a big number by a smaller number. If you've got more reactants than products, there's gonna be a bigger number on the bottom which means you're gonna end up with a K value of less than one. So the, the value of K can give you an indication as to how much product you have versus the reactant at equilibrium. So that can then also indicate where the equilibrium is sitting. So if your K value is really high, your equilibrium is gonna be sitting to the right where it's producing much more product than there is reactants. If your K value is very low decimal, um, then it's gonna be sitting to the, the equilibrium position will be sitting to the left or you've got much more reactant than you do product. Okay, so you will get asked questions like that. Sometimes the key value can be very high and it's like 600 and something, um, and that's okay. So, but sometimes it can also be very low where it's like zero point something, okay? The other thing to remember about the key value is that it's only affected by temperature. So your equilibrium constant isn't affected by concentration um, pressure or a catalyst. Um, it's the uh, equilibrium constant coefficient is always the same numerical value except for if you change temperature. When you change the temperature, depending on what the reaction is, you kind of just look at what the you learned in higher. So if you're asked what's going to happen to the value of K with an increasing temperature, you need to look at that reaction that you're given. If it's an endothermic reaction, that's favoured with an increase of temperature, so your K value is going to go up. If it's a decrease in temperature and your reaction's endothermic, then the K value is going to go down because the endothermic reaction is not going to be favoured. Okay, but just remember the only thing that affects the actual value of K is temperature. The other um, changes affect the position of the equilibrium, but the K value stays the same because it will it goes back to where it was before. It doesn't have, cause a permanent change. Okay, so the other way, the other place that this K value kind of comes into play that's more in the research and chemistry aspect, like the practical side of things, is solvent extraction. So in with solvent extraction, what we're trying to do is remove a substance from um, an aqueous layer into a solvent layer, normally, so like an organic solvent layer. And one example of how this is used is extraction of caffeine from coffee. So if you're trying to make decaffeinated coffee, then this is how you would do it. So you get this thing called a separating funnel. It's just a big glass funnel. It kind of looks like um, a heart shape. And you pour your aqueous solution in and then you put organic solvent, whatever your organic solvent you're going to be using. The thing you're trying to extract needs to be more soluble in the organic solvent than it is in water so that it will move into your solvent and then you can remove it. The two things, the two layers, like the two solvents you use, the water and the organic solvent, can't be soluble with each other because then you won't get this um, two layers separation. So what happens is you have your layer, you give it a big shake, and then what happens is hopefully the caffeine will move into the, um, in this case it's dichloromethane that you use, um, and then once you've let it sit and re-separate out, you drain off the bottom layer and then you just leave the top layer in the separating funnel and that's you separated it. And you would repeat this process numerous times so that you extract as much of the caffeine as you can um, and that's essentially how it works. But we all often talk about the partition coefficient when it comes to solvent extraction and that's essentially the equilibrium constant for the... Um, solvent extraction. 
so you can find expressions like this um, and again it's still products over reactants okay so if you're given the reaction and asked to make an expression for the partition coefficient it's just like writing an equilibrium constant expression and it's always only the products over the reactants just remember the only thing that can change the value of this is temperature so it doesn't matter if you add more of your solvent more of the water more of the coffee um, that partition coefficient will not change unless you change the temperature okay so that's the key bits of the theory behind the equilibrium constant you really need to try and get your head around and um, the last thing you're most often asked to do in the extended response questions is writing expressions for equilibrium constants and um, so we're going to do a couple of examples of that which is now where we're putting this into practice for an actual reaction because I know it doesn't really sometimes make sense when it's generic letters. So this is our reversible reaction here. Our expression for the equilibrium constant will be capital K equals, and again, it's always products over reactants. So our product is NH3. So we always put it, the concentrations in square brackets. So anything in a square bracket means it's a concentration of that thing in an equation. And we've got two moles of the ammonia. So we put a power of two here. So that's our products. Then we have it over the reactants. So we've got, oh, that's meant to be N2, sorry. Uh, we've got the concentration of N2 times by the concentration of H2 to the power of three, because there's three moles. So that's our equilibrium expression, um, equilibrium constant expression for that reaction there. If we look at number two, so we've got, again, K equals, products over reactants so we've got KaOS but that's a solid so we don't need to put that in that gets omitted remember I said exclude liquids and solids so we don't put in that we just put in the carbon dioxide and there's only one mole of it so we don't need a power and then if we look at the reactants that's a solid so that doesn't go in either so that is our equilibrium constant expression for um, that reaction there. So just remember, omit the liquids and solids. Anything with an L or S state symbol don't go in. The other thing you can be asked to do is you'll be given, um, you can be given an equilibrium constant value. You can be given concentrations for some of the reactants, uh, and then you're asked to work out the concentration of a product or vice versa. So that's just, if you do get asked about the concentration of something at equilibrium, write your equilibrium expression and then plug in the values and just solve whatever for whatever the missing variable is. Okay, so anytime you see equilibrium being mentioned in, in equilibrium expressions, this is what they're talking about, this K equals expression. And just remember, it's always products over reactants and you always exclude anything that's a pure liquid or a pure solid. So I hope that helps you with equilibrium and equilibrium coefficients. Just remember that the, if you are wanting to go back over the higher effective equilibrium stuff, uh, just go and look at my higher chemistry playlist. If you're studying advanced higher and you're looking for more revision resources in terms of quizzes and things to assess your knowledge on different subtopics, then information to join my advanced higher chemistry revision classroom is in the comments. So. Um, or the description so please have a look and get involved um, but yeah don't forget to give this a like if it you found it useful please subscribe tell all your chemistry friends and i'll see you again soon